And uh, do you have a vision when you create a song? Is there always a vision or can you tell us about some? Um, you know, the songwriting process is a very magical process. I never, never know really when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen. For me, um, the best songs, or almost all my songs, really have been when I've allowed the music to take me. It's not a, um, a mental process. It's, it's, I've sat down on, on a piano or at my guitar and just started playing. And after about 10 minutes, I'm just enjoying the sound of the, of the instrument and close my eyes usually and just let the music just take me. And then some unusual, unexpected things will happen. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a place in me that's just watching and listening and enjoying. And if I hear something, wow, that's interesting, I'll just go in that direction and play it again and, and then something will be born. And I, I really do believe um, that the uh, that art really comes from a place that, that's very difficult to define. I think it, it, you can say it comes from your heart, but I don't believe great art often comes from the mind. That's just my belief. I think uh, you know a lot of classical composers say it was God writing through them. Well, I know that feeling. I know that that. Um, that feeling when things happen that, wow, I, where did that come from, you know? Um, because inspiration, I really do believe, is a, you can call it God or you can call it uh, from your subconscious or superconscious or your, from your soul, from your heart. I don't, a lot of, it's been described in many ways, but I think inspiration really does come from a very um, special, magical, profound place. And uh, if you but first of all, you do have to have the technique down. You can't, it can't happen if you're thinking, where am I going to put my fingers or whatever. It's got to, you've got to have that kind of natural ability or natural knowledge of music or painting or whatever it is first. And then that'll grow into, um, or sometimes can grow into being inspired and, and creating in that way. It's raining again. Can you tell us how this came up, the song? It's raining again. Yeah, it was. Um, well, I have a, a pump organ at home. What is that? <laughs> a pump organ is a harmonium. Okay. It's uh, one you, pl you pump with your feet, you know, and, and it's like an organ, but you pump, pump it, pump the air through it. That it really, I've written a lot of songs on this, on this pump organ, but. It was really a day when I, I was feeling sad because I'd lost a friend, I'd lost a friendship. And um, I was looking outside and it was in, in, in England, it was pouring with rain. And literally the, the song just, uh, I started playing these chords on this pump organ. And, you know, and I just started singing, it's raining again. And the actual begin, the, the first version of it was much slower and more mel melancholy. And then when I recorded it with Supertramp, we decided to increase the tempo. You said that you had a spiritual rebirth in 2002. What happened? <laughs> well, um, for, for me, my uh, compass in life starts with, with my spiritual life. I mean, I, I really... Uh, um, that is what I try... For me, that's that's being come, living life from my heart, and uh, it's it's not always easy to do that, you know. And the stresses and the demands and all the busyness of life, it's easy to get move up into here and and try and figure it all out from here. But when I'm really centered in my heart, um, things I intuitively sense 
what needs to happen, what I need to say, my life works. And uh, for many years I lost touch with that. Um, I lost touch with that compass, if you like. And so the spiritual rebirth I'm talking about was I had an awakening and I, I um, got back into making that a real centerpiece of my life out of which everything else um, comes out of, you know. So when I leave the stage, when I leave the tour, when I go back home or whatever, um, what's really important is what's happening inside me, not not the applause or the, the success or the gold albums or the money or anything else. It's, it's what's really important is my spiritual compass being alive and solid inside me. What creates a spiritual ecstasy well, in a performance? Well, uh, one of my, uh, my main job as a performer um, really starts first thing in the morning when I wake up. I mean, I, when I come on stage, um, I try to be as clear and as empty and um, as in tune, if you like, in order to sing as deeply from my heart and my soul as I can. Now, I, w I can't do that if, I, if I'm carrying on stage all my stuff that I've been doing during the day and emails and everything else, you know. So th that is maybe what you're talking about. Um, I try and really be a clear channel, really, on stage to, to give, give a little bit of my love. That's really what I try to do in these concerts, is literally that simple. I just give a little bit of my love, give a little bit of what I love to do. And um, because in a way, with the audience and the performer, I'm just a mirror. And if I'm going on stage all angry or upset or whatever, then I'm just going to be transmitting that to the audience. And if I'm going on stage at peace in my heart, um, if I'm feeling loving, if I'm having fun, um, then they're going to feel that, and that's going to be a work. That's going to be. Um, touched in them too and they're going to home they're going to go home feeling hopefully wonderful and that's 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 how, that's how i see my job in 1987 you had an accident and the doctor told you you could never be um, a musician or play music again how did you experience that well uh, that was a huge huge moment in my life it was a big life change if you like um, It was four years after I left Supertramp, and uh, and it was at a time where I was really um, um, going through going through a lot. And basically, when I when I had the accident and smashed my wrists, um, that was when I went to the hospital, and the doctor said, "You'll never play music again." That was the first thing the doctor said. So, uh, for a musician, obviously, it was like my life had stopped. And um, from that point, my manager had to leave to go find work. Everyone around me had to leave. So suddenly, I was really alone with my family for the first time. And uh, my family really uh, helped take care of me for quite a few months until I could, my hands could do anything. But the biggest thing I had to look at was, wow, if, are the doctors right? And uh, it was a very hard time for me. I, I initially, I got very depressed and down and thought, well, my life is over because my purpose in life was so wrapped up in being a musician. So it really um, did bring up a lot of questions in me. But the, the biggest thing was that I decided I couldn't, I wasn't going to accept what the doctors had told me. And uh, for the next year, year and a half, um, I worked incredibly hard, I prayed, I was incredibly determined to make these wrists work. And um, after about a year and a half, they were, they were fine again. But it, it, it took a lot, and it was, the, it was that first decision when I decided I'm not going to be depressed anymore. You know, I really believe God gave me this gift and I want to share it. That's the, so much wrapped up in the purpose of my life. I'm not going to take the doctor's words, and I, that's, the, that's the day I started fighting.
um, how does um, your next steps look like? What are your next plans? Yeah, well, I'm really, um, my heart is really calling me into touring right now. And as, as hard as it gets sometimes, all this travel, I mean, I, I, I just uh, like a lot of the reactions I get from people who write to me and say how moved they were or how special it was to hear songs that have take, took them back to their, you know, a, time in, a time in their life when something was happening. Um, so there's going to be a lot more touring, I think, next year. And uh, I hope um, there is talk of a whole tour of Scandinavia. I really, I really have a special love for Denmark. Um, I think you've you've done a lot of, lot right, <laughs> and I, I really missed coming back more often to Denmark. So I'm, that is also on the schedule to come and play in uh, Denmark more next year. Sounds nice. Looking forward to see yeah, you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and um, of course, the very last question: uh, Will Supertramp ever be reunited? Um, at this point, I, it doesn't look likely. Um, I have tried a few times over the years, and uh, um, it is, I don't see it happening. Um, and one of the things I feel is that uh, I would hate for it to, to happen and people get really disappointed. Mm -hmm. A lot of people come to this show of mine, and they, they, they a lot of real diehard fans who were who wanted me to rejoin Supertramp, and now they're saying, don't do it. We love your solo show, because they're feeling a lot of the, of the, uh, of the magic that they think they would get from a Supertramp reunion. So I'm very happy to have a, having the reunion with my fans that I've been having. And, um, and when people come to see my show, they'll obviously hear a lot of the hits and uh, a lot of the songs that they uh, would like to hear. That sounds great. Thank you very much for the interview, Roger. Hope to see you next year in Denmark, and um, I wish you a very nice show tonight. Thank you very much. Good dreams. So much that we need to share So send a smile and show that you care